Hey guys, it's Brendan Borman back for another 270 video. And today we are gonna be doing a live stream. We have Chad Harris, who is the commissioner of the RHL Congress. He is an avid 270 player and I am happy for him to join the stream so we get a chance to ask him some questions. How are you doing tonight, Chad? Doing, doing all right. It's Monday night football night, but I mean, I'm excited with, with the election just passed and you know, a lot of tournaments I've been going through. It's it's good to get on with you. I kind of I'm actually honored to be on your because I know your channels. I've watched a couple of your videos and your and it's they're well, very well received and I'm honored to be a part of it. Yeah, awesome. And I know you you mentioned Monday Night Football. Um, Kirk Cousins coming in tonight was 0 and nine or 0 and eight on Monday Night Football. So hopefully, yeah. if you were picking somebody, you pick the Bears. Um, <laughs> but I have no skin in the game. All my fantasy football teams have pretty much lost for the week. So, um. <laughs> yeah, Dalvin, Cook, Dal, Dalvin Cook's on my one team that's eight and one. So I, kind of, I mean, I not, I had that league being salted away already. So his underperformance, but I digress. Yeah, all good. But no, the people here, um, you know, as you know, um, people here from all over the world, not just the United States, but. Um, it can enjoy the game at 270 elections over. So, um, you know, you reside in Pennsylvania. That's a pretty big um, spotlight during the election yeah. season. Um, did you vote by mail or did you vote in person? I voted, I voted in person. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I know in the, that's a big state both ways. Um, I was going to ask you, so I've never talked to someone about this specifically, but when it comes to playing the game of 270, this is a question out of right field. Um, I'm from Missouri, you know, University of Missouri, I got my shirt here, and I tend to favor, like, at the end game, if I have to decide between, like, town and gown, like, Minnesota or Missouri, because they're both 10. Like, I go <laughs> from Missouri because it's my state. Uh, how does that factor in? Um, you being from Pennsylvania, do you – I mean – at all it may you know it shouldn't mm -hmm. but sometimes I just kind of have a little bit of a bias toward Missouri at the end do you like having Pennsylvania I mean obviously it's good you know good benefits bonuses wise but yeah Pennsylvania is very strong they made Pennsylvania very strong uh which I figured they would considering it's one of the key states when it comes to elections as we just saw um mm -hmm. just like, don't think about it as as living in Pennsylvania I'm a New Jersey native actually um okay. So, I mean, but I've, I've lived, I've lived like my last 20 years in Pennsylvania. So I've been here for a while. It doesn't enter my consciousness, to be honest. I just look at it as a state that can, you know, flex your bonuses, especially early in the game, if you can get that advantage. But it doesn't, as far as it consciously entering my mind, not really. Yeah. No, I've never really asked anybody. I expected that was the case. But, um, you know, if you were from Florida or New York, you know, some of the bigger states, I think that might, you know, just a little bit of a bias. Obviously, the cool thing about 270 is you can win in, as a Republican in New York or a Democrat in right. Texas. And so I know people love that. Um, do you have a favorite candidate in the game? I play with a lot of different ones. Um, I don't know if I, I mean, I used to play with Bernie Sanders early because he was who I ident identified with because he was someone that I supported. Um, and honestly, I mean, I, I try to mix it up. I don't play with, I mean, depending on how I play the game and what strategy I want to use as a character a candidate I'll use. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say, I, I'd say I go through a lot of them. And I think doing that also helps me when I play other players that choose different candidates. Um, while it's good to have one like in your niche and in your wheelhouse to try and establish something, I think it's important to play with different characters and kind of get a feel of different characters. Play, you know, I play with it because it's just, it's just something I like to mix it up. It's, I mean, I think and probably part of my downfall is, as far as my play recently is I, I mix it up too much, but I like to kind of get a feel for different characters, see if I get a flow. Um, and I mean, if, if I had to nail me down to one that is my favorite of the game, it would be Bernie because I like Bernie, but I cool. haven't played with Bernie in so long. I can't remember last time I played with Bernie, but, um, again, yeah. it's just one of those things that it, when the mood hits me as the candidate, I'll search and I'll pick a candidate. I'll just, you know, kind of go, I played with Tulsi Gabbard for a little while. I like her. 
as a character. I like um, who's another one that I've been playing with recently. Abraham Lincoln is very strong, and I've always been a Lincoln guy, so I, you know I'll play with him. But I'll play with different characters, experiment with new things, and just try and mix it up. Yeah, awesome. And I know Tulsi Gabbard's a very well-rounded candidate. Abraham Lincoln's a very strong candidate. Um, one Republican, one Democrat. Obviously, you can argue Lincoln. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, we all play the game for different reasons. And I know um, you were an avid streamer to, to um, the, the 270 Lounge. And so yes. uh, I, love, I love to hop on your streams and... Um, kind of give live odds or just kind of conversate with some of the people, um, give right. some advice. Right. Um, is there one thing or a kind of a trend or just basic strategy, anything that you've learned from streaming some of the top players matches? Um, Cause I know you've been streaming the Rio Honda league, your um, Congress, you, you know, people like yes. Rashad yeah. and people, um, you know, uh, Joshua Fisher, some people who have already earned births into the White House, the, the big boy league. Right. Um, you know, what are some of the benefits to being a streamer to those matches? You learn, you learn a lot of strategy. Um, you learn that there is more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Um, I, and, and honestly, since I've been streaming the matches, um, the thing that I've gotten the most out of it, to be perfectly honest, is how deep the player pool is now and how much better the players are, the players are in the lounge as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, I mean, we're talking about a group now in our lounge that has over 8,200 members now. And that number just keeps growing and growing. It's been amazing to, to see the growth of the league and how much better the players are in the league from when I just joined in January. Um, and streaming was something that as I got more involved into the league, I wanted to do just to kind of publicize the league, um, mm -hmm. which I think has been great, especially the past year and the way tournaments have developed. Um, but yeah, you, you, you get a feel for players, especially the elite players. So when you go up against them, like if you play them in a tournament or something like that, you kind of have an idea of how they play instead of just kind of going in blind. Not that you'll succeed against them most of the time, <laughs> but you kind, of, you, you kind of get a feel for what they like to do. And, for sure. And then basically, you know, you can try and match wits with them. And, and you just learn things from that. So, I mean, the streaming has been invaluable to me. I used to just watch them and learn, but as I actually do the streams and see how they approach things, you could see, oh, okay, this is another way to go about it yeah. and things like that. It's, it's fun, too. It is time-consuming, so I do want to say thank you on behalf of not only myself, because I've killed plenty of time and entertainment watching some of your streams, but um, it is a thankless job sometimes, and yeah. you, know, you can get burnt out with it, so I do appreciate it. Um, I don't think have we ever played, Chad. I don't know if we've ever played a match before. We played together in the... Oh, we were we were teammates in a tournament. Help us. Oh, we were. Was it two v two? Yes, it was right. It was a couple months into the game, and we it, it was a two v two where uh, one person dropped out after eight turns or something like that. That was that was a tournament I made. Yeah, and that was my first two v two. There yes. have been I think four two v two four two v two tournaments on record, and mine was a president, vice president, and Jason Casey won end up winning that. Um, tournament, but I remember that. Um, yeah, and you and I were actually teammates on that. So okay, I'm sorry. I, but yeah, it's it's random because I know um, from talking to you that you prefer playing one v one versus multiplayer. Two v two is a whole different ball game, you know, because it's right. it, it's a it's cool because you have that communication. And if you guys haven't played that before, I encourage you to try that. Basically, the premise is, you know. You've got two people who are actively trying to go up against two other players. You can have a player drop out on a certain turn. You can, mm -hmm. you know, have a player lose naturally on a ballot, and it's a two-on-one. But regardless, um, you know, I hopefully one of these days, I know we're in several tournaments together, we'll cross paths, but um, hopefully you haven't watched too many of my YouTube videos. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually – I. I haven't really seen you play either. It's kind of bizarre. Like I know we talked and, and we we've been part of you know, watching each other's streams and ever. But yeah, I I don't think I I I 
Well, if you want to watch tomorrow night, I'm playing Troy Moore in the RHL White House playoffs. Um, What time time does that match come off? That has not been exactly set. Um, I would imagine it'll be sometime between 6 and 9, my time, central time. Um, We're we're pretty flexible. Um, I'm also in a survivor um, the survivor tournament, the, yes. And there's tribal council tomorrow. Luckily, the Republican, the team that I'm on, they did not lose. So <laughs> I have no commitments tomorrow, but I'm still like anxious to see like how the tribe goes because Eric York is playing and like, oh wow, you know, um, you know, they, I, I'd vote him off. No, <laughs> it, 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 vote him off. No, um, you know, but they, their tribe is stacked. They've got Rick Whitmer. They've got. Um, um, Patrick Gauze, they have um, Eric York, Rebecca Gill, Jeff Ray. I mean, their oh, their wow. tribe oh, is. Yeah, Rebecca, Rebecca, and Patrick have been two up and coming players. It's good to see them kind of mix it up with the big boys too. Yeah, Rebecca and Patrick were very involved in the lounge, and um, I'm also miss. I'm going to mention the rest of the people just so I don't, you know, feel like I'm playing right. favorites here. Is yeah, you good, Jeffrey Jeffrey Bro- Brobowitz? Bro- yes. And then there is, um, I always say Eoin, but it's Owen. <laughs> Owen. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, I told my wife one time his name was Eoin, and so now it's just ingrained in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, actually, um, not to cut you off there, but yeah, Rebecca and Jeff, I know they were in, they were in the RHL Congress League, and um, especially Rebecca has gotten so much better. Um, so it's good to say, I mean, she's, she's actually running tournaments now, whereas a few yeah. months ago, I would have never seen that coming from her. So, I mean, she's been, uh, one, uh, she's improved as a, as a female player, which is nice to see in the lounge, considering most of the players you see, I would say probably 90% male. So it's good mm-hmm. to see, it's good to see. You know, <laughs> well, I, it was just a number off the top of my head. I, you know, just from seeing the lounge, but no, we're I can name three, Rebecca Gill. Um, and then there, and then there is, um, oh gosh, um, see, I'm going blank already. Put me in the spot. Christina Wheeler, uh, Christina Wheeler is very active as far as games played. Yeah, she's, she's probably the best female player I have played. I mean, Rebecca mm-hmm. is definitely getting close. Um, but, um, and then there's one other gal who's from North Dakota. Um, Nora Hyde. Nora Hyde, thank you. Nora, Nora, Nora. So um, those, <laughs> are, those are the only three. Those are the only three I know. But um, obviously, we support more. Um, anybody's welcome to play this this good game. And if you are Absolutely. watching this video and you are um, a female, especially, comment below. We'd love to even chat with you sometime or kind of uh, teach you the ropes on how to play if you're a new player. So sure. Um, I do want to talk about. You mentioned the tournaments. Um, you know, obviously we have the RHL um, Congress that you are commissioned, and I'll let you talk about that. But I also know that there's this really awesome tournament you've been doing and massive participation, the Tournament of Champions. Hmm. So do you want to talk about both of those? Sure. Um, I'll start. Well, I'll start with the uh, Tournament of Con- uh, Tournament of Congress. Yeah, there I go. Um, tournament of Champions tournament, um, which um, to kind of give a brief history about it, really wasn't my original idea i happened to see a post in the beginning of august that from a guy who was in the lounge that i don't see really much of and he posed he made a post about oh let's do a 16 tournament um format to see who the best player is which i thought was a really awesome idea mm-hmm. so i kind of I, I had messaged him a couple of times he never got back so i'm like well you know what i'm just gonna take a run with it and see what happens um and after i published the original idea um Tossin Lake, who's one of the legendary players of the game, very successful. Um, and he, he saw my idea and he said, you might want to cut back on this a little bit. So I refined it. And I, it, the, the premise was to see who, who's the, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. The um, most diverse player in the game, a player that can maybe take somebody that's from a, from a candidate pool that you don't normally see and put them in a tournament and see how it goes. Like a and, Sarah Payton or like a um, Vladimir Putin, um, you know, just right. players, candidates that, you know, are not very popular for sure. Yeah, I mean, we had, I mean, it, it won't, 
And it, I wound up with 10 preliminary tournaments, which included the United Nations tournament, which Tyler Demore won with Queen Elizabeth. And if it wasn't for a ballot turn, would have made the semifinals of the TOC. Um, there was Frank Alessandrini, who got into the final bracket as Tim Scott and made a semifinal um, and beat Javier Rodriguez in the quarters of that tournament. Mm -hmm. um, but but the, the tournament really exceeded my expectations as far as interest and interest from the elite players, which, is, which I couldn't have been happier about. Um, so that tournament, because of the interest, is something I'm going to run twice a year. Um, kind of like semi-annual, one ending in May, one ending in November. And, for, and it's something I want to keep evolving into somewhere where we have a final bracket of 16 players. Uh, Jason Casey won the inaugural TOC, so he has a bid into the next one. And actually, one of the preliminaries that I'm going to establish for the next season is um, taking a pool of champions from all the various two tournaments in 2020 and put them in the beginning of a tournament. The first preliminary tournament of that TOC in January is a 2020 champions tournament. Um, so it's, it's not, I mean, and you're part of that list as a matter of fact, I mean, we're talking about players like you, again, Javier Rodriguez, uh, Jason Casey, Tossin Lake, Jeff Ray, uh, Dave Robinson. Stupid. I mean, the list goes on and on with the amount of players. It's going to wind, I'm going to, want to have a 32 player tournament to kick that off so that's wow. that, that tournament i mean it's just again exceeded my any of my expectations um and it's something that is you know helped the visibility of the league and again help to see who who is the most diverse of course jason case jason casey won as michelle obama <laughs> it was a battle of obamas in the final but the point of it was to get like to see Queen Elizabeth in a tournament setting, to see Tim yeah. Scott in a tournament setting, to see Deval Patrick, who um, Javier Rodriguez had in a tournament setting, and just to kind of mix up the kind of mix it up and add some freshness to the streams and to the tournaments. For sure, no, that sounds like a great idea. I'm glad. I'm glad it was molded to um, fit, you know, the appropriate people, but also new people. I mean, everyone's invited, and in, under the first. Um, tournament of champions that you're talking about in January starting off is going to be the people who have earned an automatic berth, but people can always join um, the semi-annual. What's the best way? Do they Should they message you on Facebook, on the lounge, if they want to join? Well, well I'm going to, I'm probably, I'm starting to put together um, a list. Uh, Matt, back tonight, earlier tonight, I was kind of gathering a list of the players that played in this year's TOC as as to help ranking the players in the preliminaries. Um, but everybody's invited. Um, I will be probably putting out a post. Um, I'll definitely be putting out a post for the two tw uh, 2020 champions. That's the, one, that's the one preliminary that's not going to be everybody's invited. That's just strictly for the champions of the 2020 tournaments this year. Um, but the other 10 preliminaries are going to be open to the public like they were. Um, there'll be some adjustments made as far as, you know, how many you can play in to avoid scheduling conflicts. Um, I'll, be, I'll be posting about that in December, uh, in the beginning of December. And the, 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 invitation, the open invitation will start after the first preliminary. Um, but I want to kind of kick off 2021 with a bang, considering how 2020 has been with COVID and everything else that's going on in the world. Um, kind of like and get the lounge off to a, a good start and, you know, see the best players play against each other and earn a final bracket spot. So, but other than yeah. that, it's open invitation. Um, it's basically first come, first serve, get into it. Um, and then, you know, it's basically, you know, proceed from there. Awesome. Well, that's good info. Um, and I know this Saturday, isn't that the, um, you got a big RHL Congress matchup coming up, right? Yes, uh, this Saturday is the championship match of the inaugural season of the RHL Congress. Um, it's between Joshua Fisher and Dave Robison. Um, both played in the same division in the regular season, ironically enough. Um, that's another league that um, I worked with um, Javier with. Um, as I was starting, I wanted to run a league to see how it would do. And... Um, I think the original concept was to have kind of like a, 
a money league, actually. And then Javier said, well, I have this idea for this premise in coordination with the White House. And we talked for a couple of weeks and the Congress was formed. And um, it's been a league that the purpose of it is to have your second tier players below players like yourself and Nathan Williams and Jason Casey and the like, and Tossin and Adam Montgomery. Adam Montgomery is going to be running the RHL White House next season. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's, it's been a league where we see, again, it's, we've seen the development of players. Um, Zach Wojcicki has been an awesome find. He's, he's been a great player. Um, and I think more, and now we have the players who were newer players at the start of the Congress season in August have now developed itself where they can be um, be able to play in the Congress next year. Now that league is going to be an invitation. Um, the, the, the invites will be going out again. That's going to be around beginning of December where invites will be sent out to the players who, who was Adam and I are talking about because Adam and I are both going to have spots open. I'm going to have 15 spots available. It looks like. Um, and so just to, just to, just to preface, it's a, it's an invitation league. However, if you have interest, it does not hurt to send a message. Oh, to you. Yeah, you, you definitely don't, you know, please pick me, please, please pick me. You know, <laughs> we, we, if you were have interest, you know, we want to know about it. However, it does not guarantee you a spot. Now, Correct. I can say <laughs> from being in the RHL White House, that is the Premier League. I mean, yes. you play every single top player that you can think of, and it is high, I wouldn't say, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's high stress, but you, it's crazy because you put it's as much stress as you put on yourself and the expectations. Yes. And obviously, you know, I have a YouTube channel, like I don't want to lose and be a laughing stock. However, <laughs> you know, if I lose to Adam Montgomery or Eric York or Supan or these good players, like I'm not gonna like cry myself to sleep. I'll probably be mad for about 15 minutes. But right. um, one of the cool things about this league is that there is a regulation. And, and so you can you can be regulated and go down or you can be promoted. So um, it can reward players from your league, um, the Congress, you know, who have earned a right to test themselves in the White House League. And so right. that's a cool thing. Um, again, you know, you, you mentioned that the league was maybe thinking about being money related. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, obviously family life and, and your personal stuff comes first. Absolutely. You know, we, try yes. to, we try to have a set schedule in both the White House and the Congress to where um, players can have an expectation of maybe one match a week, two matches a week, depending on the timing of things. But um, I, I don't want time to be a deterrent of someone not no. having an interest, but, um, you know, it is, I would say standard wise, um, you know, there's all kinds of community tournaments. This one is the premier league of yes. the entire, um, 270 lounge. So if you want to be a part of that, if that's something that excites you, definitely, um, send a message to Adam Montgomery or Chad Harris or even Javier Rodriguez and we can get you connected. So yeah, that's the- a, yeah, that's the one thing I want to stress is the difference between the TOC and the R and the Congress, like you said before. The TOC is an invitation that's for everybody. That's uh, everybody has a fair shot. The Congress is a little more exclusive, but at the same time, I mean, if you keep playing in tournaments and you, you know, refine your skills and get better and say, hey, I'm interested in the, we're, we're always, you know, and it's, it's a process that Adam and I will be talking about as far as who will go into the White House, who will go into the Congress. But um, we don't we don't discourage um, your enthusiasm for it. Um, it's something that uh, we encourage people that are enthusiastic about it. But it's also something where it is it is a schedule. It is it is a three month grind. We started in August and now mm-hmm. November. I know the I know the White House playoffs are underway, um, and of course Saturday is our is our championship. I mean the schedules again. Real life takes precedence um Matt we found that with the election round which was kind of ironic because we went through a 14 game schedule regular season in six and a half weeks and then when it got to the election round it took a month <laughs> it was kind of ironic yeah. in that. but but exactly and and it's not as long as there's communication and the one thing I will say about the two leagues 
you, you couldn't find a better group of people. Um, and that's what the lounge is about, the people. The people that play mm-hmm. the game. You know, you build a camaraderie with, with the players. Um, with the Congress, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, coordination, a lot of good, honest communication, you know, most of the time. You really didn't have to, you know, babysit much and go, okay, when's your match? You know, as long as the communication lines are open and you have a great group of players, the league works. And I know that works for um, Adam's league, Adam and Javier's league, and it's worked for my league very well. And we've actually kind of talked about in the future possibly developing another tier below the Congress um, for beginner players to kind of make them feel like they can move up the ranks as well. Um, I know the relegation idea for the White House didn't quite work out this season because of people just not showing up and not finishing their seasons or whatever, but, um, but we're still going to keep that concept. And maybe about this, maybe next year around this time, we'll be talking about a third RHL league um, where we can have, you know, the players that are coming up to that second tier compete. Um, It is a grind. It is, it is a sketch. It is, you know, it's about a three month season and takes a lot of preparation, making the schedules, determining the rules. Um, and it takes, and that gets refined as well. But it's it's a league that is incre- It's incredible to be a part of. It's great to compete, but at the same time, um, it's the camaraderie you build with your the people in your league, and you know, and with Adam and Javier, and it's just an amazing experience. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Hey, and I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to this. Um, I try to watch as many um, Congress matches as I, you know, when it's a live stream. Uh, on the page do you actually are you a member of the congress do you play uh matches i played yes okay cool i I didn't know um and so um i you know you've mentioned some names you know joshua fisher um you know some some people that i've played in the tournament you know lobby or the public lobby and they're they you know even though that there is kind of maybe a distinction of like this is a mid-tier player top you know this game is so fun and so um, complex that any given day someone else can win. And that's something, yes. you know, that aspect of it, the people aspect of it, you know, we all play this game um, for different reasons. And, and so, you know, I, again, I want to say thank you for all you do for streaming um, and for running tournaments. It's, you know, can be a thankless job. I do want to ask you a couple um, random questions. So sure. do, you con- do you consider um, any player in the lounge to be your rival, like a player that you match up really well or you have kind of a back and forth history with as far as competitive uh, matches? Um, well, I did when I played on a more regular basis. I will say that. Um, when, I played, when I played pretty much in the summer, pretty much all the time, um, and I was, I was like, you know, cutting my teeth. I mean, I would play Jay. I love playing Jason Casey, even though he would beat the beat the brakes off me. Uh, <laughs> um, I like when I was in the Congress. Um, I almost beat. I, I have. I had some good matches with Matthew Perkins. Um, I had some good matches with Dean Zelenek. Um But like I said, I, I mean, I really don't have that right now. Um, it's okay. Now, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, curious, it's curious. one of those things. I, I could I could have answered that question better three months ago, to be honest with you. That's okay. That's okay. I just I'm trying to get to know. You know, I mean, everyone like it's. You know, there are players that I beat on a regular basis, and then there's some players I struggle with. And I'll talk to somebody like sure. you struggle with that guy. I'm like, you know, everyone has different play styles, and you know, Dean's a great guy. He likes multiplayer. Matthew Perkins is someone who. Um, I would say is top tier in the RHL um, mm-hmm. Congress, in my opinion. So, oh, quick, really uh, quick, quick little, in, quick little insert here. Uh, uh, the irony of it all: when I first started playing the lounge and playing tournaments, I know when the World Cups were going on. Um, my very first World Cup in pool play, I think it was my very first tournament. I want to say, and I actually made, I made it past the group stage. And one of the player, the match that got me out of the group stage was Joshua Fisher who now is been promoted to the RHL White House and is in the championship match of the Congress. Um, yeah. Josh and I always, I mean, so him and I always, have always had good matches and he's another player that's really stepped his game up. I, that was just, I just thought of that as you were talking about that. And he, and, and I'm not, 
this is not a negative. If you're listening to this, Josh, uh, he's a great player. It's it's surprising to me that he's never beaten me because um, we've played probably eight to ten times or so, and you know he he's someone who will pip into your states and hope that you overspend, and you know <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just don't spend <laughs> like, you know, if, if he takes a bonus from me, I'll get it back the next turn. Um, but he, you know, I can see why he would dominate newer players and it'll be interesting because I haven't played him since probably March, maybe, right. you know, or somewhere. So, and so that's a long time ago in this game. I mean, you know, you talk about, oh, I, oh, it's and, turn. I mean, there are so many different players. So I'm, you know, going to reserve judgment. I'll look forward to watching Josh pick on um, David Robinson. Um, that should be a fantastic match. David uh, Robinson almost beat me in the tournament on the 270 hosted. He had like Old South, Swing States, African American, and like I didn't have a bonus. And I just was like, I was just like saving money because he just, he just won, just one pit past me in, like, in a crucial turn early on. And he just kind of kept closing off stuff. Well, at one point that I didn't wait for a quick ballot and I got it. Like I double tapped right. everything. He like did a single tap in a couple of states to block me. And right. he was so bad. <laughs> and as he <laughs> as he should have been. But you no, know, David, um, I I would definitely favor David in that match against Joshua Fisher. Um, nothing against too. nothing against Joshua, but um, I've seen David. David's been a very active player in several of these tournaments. There's a college basketball tournament going on right now yes. that's being hosted by Trevor Albert and Zach Algazi. And David is ranked top five. I mean, okay. you know, he is he's ahead of some players that, you know, you maybe wouldn't think off the top of your bat. But, um, no, very interesting. I will do my best to tune into um, that match on Saturday. Do you have a set time for yes. that? Yes. It's actually, I already published the event in the lounge. Um, it's actually an afternoon. It's a matinee. One o'clock Eastern time in the afternoon on Saturday. One o'clock afternoon Eastern time? Eastern time, yes. Eastern time, cool. Sorry, you said that. I just, my, uh, my dad ears, I, maybe I need to clean them or something. But <laughs> no, you can see my, my humble abode here. So this is, this used to be a, well, it used to be an office, hence the computer. Right. And then we got this TV because why not have a TV and a bed, you know, so we can have the mother-in-law stay here. we got some you know, baby stuff over, over here. Um, <laughs> it's kind of just a humble jumble mess, but <laughs> it is, it is what it is. Hey, I, I just moved into my place last week, so I'm still trying to get the kinks and, you know, the, the proper angles for the lighting and so forth. But um, I, I understand that, but I mean, it's Saturday's going to be a great time. I hope, I hope some people can get into it. I know, Afternoon streams aren't as popular, but I'm really looking forward to the match and um, see it, and see how it goes. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, I appreciate you hopping on. I'm going to give you the chance because um, you know we we have talked, but maybe not in this setting before. Is there anything you want to ask me? Kind of put me on the spot. Uh, you know, just kind of ask me anything about 270. Um. But something kind of a little more a little selfish reasons maybe because because okay. um, I'm I'm at that point in my game where I'm actually um, but what would like because I'm kind of in that like middle tier that kind of you know in between and mm -hmm. um, the part of my game that I struggle with and I'm sure a lot of other players that are up and coming and are in that tier along with me have have the same um, issue is. Attaining state bonuses, state groups early in the game is something that, you know, I can do basically with my eyes closed. Right. Um, I'm not, and I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that there's a point in the, after that point in the game is kind of like the mid game where you pivot. Cause there'll be games when I feel like, okay, I've done good saving money. I've got to say, you know, I've got two state groups. And then the next thing I look up and I'll see an opponent that's gotten four more state groups has a million dollars saved up by turn nine. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a game, it's probably the part of my game that I struggle with the most. And I mean, I'm sure I speak for a lot of players, especially newer players with that. Is it yeah. just a matter of just spending the minimum or like when, uh, and knowing when to attack and when to defend? I think that's a part of the game that a lot of 
um, new, newer that's, players. That's going to be sometimes. very hard for me to articulate it without a specific scenario, but I, I, right. I appreciate the question. So, yes, it is very important to be efficient with your money. Um, you want to achieve state groups, you know, and learn the combinations. You know, we all know New York, Massachusetts, Utah, Town and Gown. Um, but, you know, what if your opponent goes into Massachusetts? You know, do you spend more? Do you pivot to like a Minnesota? Do you, you know, not even go for Town and Gown altogether? Um, you know, if you are going into, you know, California versus New York, you know, if it's going to be a battle for, you know, high tech, you know, how does that come into play? Do you prioritize, you know, maybe um, Utah, Massachusetts as a California player to prohibit that person from getting that town and gallon bonus and fight for high tech because then that helps them in New Hampshire. That right. can help them, you know, um, it's kind of a game within a game. Um, there are certain states that are obviously really valuable. You've got Virginia, you've got oh, yeah. Arizona on a, on a cost per basis, you know, a lot of players will, will max those states out pretty early on. Yes. And while Arizona is one of my favorite states to have because it gives you Mine an edge too. Latino, you know, it, it, lots of, it's a swing state, you know, lots of good reasons. If you can get someone to overspin, it's good to have options, but, you know, you kind of have to – I don't want to say gamble because it's, it's an educated guess, but it's an unknown. Um, I – would actually, just for you specifically, um, Chad, you might check out a video that I just posted today of mm -hmm. me versus Rick Whitmer. It's a Mizzou versus Gonzaga for the college basketball tournament. I saw a post about that, yeah. So that match specifically, we were both Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is a very loaded candidate, you know, mm. um, and – you know, I, for those of you who don't know, I'm a nerd. I keep a Excel document. I'm, I document all of my high, high player profile matches. Um, mm -hmm. Since, uh, I'm looking at it right now, since February the 1st, I've played 694 matches that have been coded. So it doesn't wow. even count toward the leaderboard, um, toward the win loss ratio. Right. Um, I, I've played Rick Whitmer five times. Um, I am now I now hold the three to two advantage, but um, this is the first match we've played since May. Um, so anyway, when you're playing against a candidate like that, where you have you know African American swing states, high tech, right. you know you want to think of it on a on a bigger scale of what I mean. You, you obviously you can't plan ten moves ahead, but of course if if my opponent doesn't block me, what is my ideal path? And so if that swing states into manufacturing, we'll be for Republican. If that's, you know, African, you know, high tech, town and gallon, African American for a Democrat, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's very different, but the pivoting, you want to give yourselves more than one path. So like if you're going for Latino and you have to have Illinois, you know, and your opponent has manufacturing and you have maybe um, African-American, like you're going to want to maybe go all the way to 10th pick to get that Latino bonus. But if, if Illinois has no impact on any other bonuses, like you've already got AA safe, right. pick, you know, then maybe you pip up into uh, Nevada and New Jersey and you give yourself right. some options. Um, I would also say that in general, um, you know, you, you mentioned saving. Is that something that you have an issue to with, like people getting a lot of money, or, or how does that typically happen? Are you so like, far as like how I people, like, or? No. So you said, I mean, and maybe, I, maybe I'm just asking a dumb question here, but you, were, you said you look up and all of a sudden they have four more bonuses and like a million more dollars. When, when it's the cash, is it something to where they're saving money and you don't know how to combat that? Or is it something to where they just have been really efficient and you thought you were doing well all of a sudden now it's they're probably, moving it's, prob it's probably been an over defense if I were really analyze my game. Um, but I just, I, I, it's probably a skill that I kind of have to per kind of work on myself as far as efficiency. Cause I oh. think, I think it, I think it, 
for me, I think when I, as I think about the games now, um, they're very efficient, but are still able to kind of put pressure. Um, so, I, and you, and you can't pressure everywhere. Put... It costs too much money to pressure everywhere. So you have to pick your spots. But it sounds like, and I might be wrong here. Um, you, I mean, obviously, you, you know how to get a bonus and the whole money, but um, the big states, the big four, um, right? You know, there are people like to have different combinations of them. I'm not a big California, New York person. Um, I can make it right. multiplayer. You know, I would much prefer like, like Texas and Florida. Um, but you can do Texas and California. You can do all. You can do Texas and New York, um, and there are basic paths off of that. Um, but really, you know, you want to think of it like chess. Whereas, you know, not only what are you going to do two moves, two moves ahead, but you know, what states does your opponent have to have in order to get a bonus? And sometimes, Brent, Brendan, can... Brendan um, I hate to cut you off. I kind of have to cut this short. Um, yeah. So uh, I have to do. Uh, my niece is having issues. I gotta. I hate to cut this yeah. short, but um, as we said, real life takes precedence. So I, yeah. Here, here's a prime example. Well, uh, I'll sign off here, Chad. But I want to say thank you so much for um, jumping on with me. Um, appreciate it's been a blast it. Blast talk two seventy. Hope everything's going well with your niece. And guys, until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next two seventy stream. Thanks, Chad. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brendan. Yep.